Hi friends, Miss Carrie here from the West Haven Public Library. Are you ready for story time? Great! So before we begin, let's sing our clap and sing hello song. So the first thing we're going to do is clap. And it goes like this. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With all our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. And we wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With all our friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. And we stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. With all our friends at story time, we stomp and sing hello. Yay! Okay, my friends, let's get ready for our first story. So you can sit crisscross applesauce on the floor, or if you'd like, you can sit in a comfy chair or a couch, anywhere you feel comfy. And we'll begin. Today, I'm going to read you stories about hibernation. And that's a pretty big word. And hibernation or hibernating is when certain animals, like bears, take a very, very long nap during the winter. They sleep for a few months and then they wake up in the spring. And so today I'm going to read you some stories about some bears that are hibernating and finding a good place to sleep during the winter. And our first story is called A Bed for Bear and it's written by Clive McFarland. And I hope you enjoy it. It was nearly winter and Bernard was getting sleepy. It was almost time for the bears to begin hibernating. There was just one problem. How could Bernard possibly be expected to sleep in a bear cave? It was too noisy, too big, and too crowded. That kind of place was right for some bears, but not for Bernard. So Bernard did what any bear without a bed would do. He set off to find a new place to sleep. Bernard knew there had to be a bed that was just right for him. Bernard walked into the forest, and there he met Frog. Hi, Frog. I'm looking for a new bed. Can I try your lily pad? Sure, Bernard. Hop on. Wet isn't very comfy. Sorry, Bernard. It's hard to hop on a lily pad. This kind of bed is right for frogs, but not right for big bears like you. Bernard kept walking. Then he came across Bird. Hi, Bird. I hear you have a great bed. Can I try your treetop? Climb on, Bernard. I'm sorry, but Windy doesn't feel right. You get used to it, Bernard. I don't think so, Bird. I guess this kind of bed is right for birds, but not for bears. Bernard saw Rabbit on his way back to the burrow. Hi, Rabbit. Your bed looks quite nice. Can I try your burrow? There's really not a lot of room, Bernard. You're right. This is a tight fit. I tried to warn you. This kind of bed is right for rabbits, but not for bears. Bernard kept walking. He stumbled into Hedgehog soon after. Hi, Hedgehog. Where's your bed? I sleep right here. What happens if it rains? I get wet. Oh, well, that's probably fine for hedgehogs, Bernard said, yawning. Oh, but not for a bear. Bernard was getting sleepier and sleepier. Luckily, he came across what looked like a fine place to lie down. This bed looks comfy, even if it is a bit lonely. Bernard was not alone for long. Bernard, what are you doing in my bed? A badger set is no place for bears. Why not? Because it's for badgers. Bernard didn't know where else to look. He was getting ready to give up when a little voice asked, What kind of bed do you want? Well, that's simple, you see. I need a bed that is not wet, not windy, extra roomy, with just the right amount of company. I think I know a place for you. 
And so Bear and Mouse went looking through the forest a little bit longer to see if they could find a bed for Bear. Up ahead, there was a rather interesting bed. It was dry and calm with lots of space and plenty of company. This kind of bed was okay for some bears, but it was perfect for Bernard. Bernard slept all winter in a perfect bed for a bear. The end. I'm so happy that Bear found a bed, aren't you? I think he's going to be nice and cozy for the winter. Let's do a little rhyme about two little brown bears. So get your fingers out, one little brown bear and the second little brown bear. And it goes like this. Two little brown bears sitting on a hill. One named Jack, the other named Jill. Run away, Jack. Run away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Two little brown bears digging in the snow. One named Fast, the other named Slow. Run away, Fast. Run away slow, come back fast, come back slow. Two little brown bears feeling very proud. One named quiet, the other named loud. Run away quiet, run away loud, come back quiet, come back loud. Yay! Okay, friends, it's time for our second story. So you can sit crisscross applesauce on the floor or find a nice, comfortable, and cozy spot somewhere in your house. And again, our story is about a bear. It's about an old bear who's waking up from his hibernation nap. And it's written by Kevin Hankies, and I hope you enjoy it. By the time old bear fell asleep for winter, it was snowing hard. Soon he was dreaming. He dreamed that spring had come and he was a cub again. The flowers were as big as trees. He took a nap in a giant pink crocus. Then he dreamed it was summer. The sun was a daisy and the leaves were butterflies. Part of the sky clouded over, and it rained blueberries. Next, he dreamed of autumn. Everything was yellow and orange and brown, even the birds and the fish and the water. After that, he dreamed that winter was back. The world was covered in ice. It was night, and the sky was blazing with stars of all colors. The cold went on forever. Old Bear slept and dreamed, dreamed and slept. When he finally woke up, it seemed to him that no time had passed since he had fallen asleep. He yawned, oh, he stretched. He poked his head out of his den to see if it was still snowing. He blinked and blinked again. And when Old Bear walked out into the beautiful spring day, it took him a minute to realize that he wasn't dreaming. The End Let's sing a song about snowflakes today. So this song is called Snowflakes, Snowflakes. So you can stand up and spread out and you can stretch your arms out and stretch your legs out. Can't see my legs, but they're stretched out. And we're going to rock back and forth and we'll pretend that we're snowflakes floating in the sky. And it goes like this. Snowflakes, snowflakes all around in the air and on the ground. Some are big and some are small. Roll them into a snowball. 
When the sun comes out to play, watch them as they melt away. Yay! Good job! <laughs> it's time for our egg shaker rhymes. Yay! The first egg shaker song that we're going to sing is Shake Your Shakers Up. Shake your shakers up and shake your shakers down. Dance your little shakers all around the town. Dance them on your shoulders and dance them on your head. Dance them on your knees, then tuck them into bed. Very nice. How about we make some popcorn. So let's hold our shaker in one hand and get a nice big kettle or a nice big pot and we're going to cook our popcorn on our stove. And it goes like this. Pop, pop, pop. Put the corn in the pot. Pop, pop, pop. Shake it till it's hot. Pop, pop, pop. Lift the lid, and what have you got? Popcorn! Yay! How about we make a milkshake to go with our popcorn? So hold your shaker in one hand, and get a nice glass of milk, a nice cold glass of milk, and we'll make a delicious milkshake. So first you take some milk, pour the milk, then you take some cream, pour the cream, stir it round and round, shake it and you'll see. Ready to shake? Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it all up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it all up. Yay! Okay, my friends, let's put our shakers away and grab our scarves. Let's start with window wind. So let's take our scarves and we're going to wave them around in the windy breeze. And it goes like this. Window, window, wind, I say, what are you blowing away today? Scarves, oh, scarves, oh, scarves, I say, I am blowing the scarves away. Can you hug your scarf? Who found their scarf? Did you find your scarf? I found my scarf. Very nice. How about we try the elevator song? So open your scarf up nice and big. And we're going to wave them up and down. And we'll take a little ride on the elevator. Let's go riding in the elevator. Let's go riding in the elevator. Let's go riding in the elevator. Come along with me. First floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, and your tippy toes. And down, 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 down. Yay! Let's get ready for our very last scarf rhyme. So let's take our scarf and scrunch it up in our hands and get ourselves nice and quiet and nice and still. And we'll get ready for little Jack in the box. And remember, Jack only pops out if it's very, very quiet. So we'll have to see if he pops out today. Okay, you ready? Little Jack in the box sitting very still. Will he pop out? Yes, he will! Yay! <laughs> Should we try that one more time? Okay. Let's Scrunch up our scarves, hide them in your hands, and get nice and quiet and nice and still. And we'll see if Jack pops out. 
Little Jack in the box sitting very still. Will he pop out? Yes, he will. He popped out twice today. Very nice. You must have been very quiet. Good job. <laughs> That's all the time that we have for story time, my friends. I hope that you enjoyed your stories and the songs and the rhymes, and I hope you're all doing very well, and I get to see you very soon. Have a good day.